After spending a little over an hour in the temple, I decided to move on. I headed south down the main road toward the French concession area in order to see some historic homes. I tried to take alleyways instead of streets in order to observe daily life. I found balconies hosting the daily laundry, rows of bicycles and vendors selling produce on their doorsteps. Since I couldn't locate my position on the map, I just kept going south. I was amazed by the variety of commerce in the city. I passed by open-air restaurants selling noodle meals for less than 20 cents to high-end shops selling Burberry sweaters for $400. I walked into a tiny shop selling genuine Afghan rugs for thousands of American dollars. Fortunately for me, I also found a clothes store where I bought a much needed sweater to help protect me from the freezing cold weather. This was the home of Dr. Sun Yat Sum, who was the preeminent leader of China's Republican Revolution. He did much to inspire and organize the movement that overthrew the Manchu dynasty in 1911 and helped pave the way for the eventual reunification of the country. The tour throughout the home was interesting due to the English signs in each of the rooms briefly explaining the history. Better yet, in each room, our guide would press a button and an audio guide in English would go further in depth. In the basement were photos and more historical notes on his life. On my way to my next stop, I walked through a park. It had some gardens, amusement rides, and a man-made lake where you could rent mini fishing poles in order to try and catch a goldfish. I took a moment to rest and watch young Chinese boys and girls play and have fun. My next stop was the building where the Chinese Communist Party was officially inaugurated with a secret meeting in the basement. The museum itself is fairly interesting with artifacts, letters and other memorabilia documented in both English and Chinese. I spent an hour at the museum before deciding to move on. All day I had been challenged by the cold weather. So I decided to try and find the market I had been to yesterday so I could buy some more sweaters. I didn't end up finding it, but I did locate a park where the sound of music drew me deeper into the park. I saw a crowd gathered around the musicians and quietly joined as a spectator. The crowd was mostly very, very old with a few young children in the mix. An old lady was singing into an ancient microphone connected to a speaker. Behind her was a band consisting of a saxophone, drums using a box, violin, and the traditional Chinese string instrument. A couple of elderly people danced. It was quite a sensory experience. I wanted to film, but didn't want to disturb the group. I enjoyed the performance for a good 20 minutes before I finally decided to pull out the camera. The lady motioned that I should sit in the front so I could get a better angle on filming. They then resumed their little concert. After each number, I would play back the song for the musicians. Everyone would buy for the best angle so they could watch themselves through my tiny viewfinder. It was amusing watching people react to seeing themselves. They were so delighted with being able to watch themselves that we repeated the sequence of events a couple of times. The two little children were sitting next to me, so I turned the camera around to film them sitting next to me. Their eyes almost popped out of their heads in excitement. In fact, the whole atmosphere was so charged up that I decided I'd better leave so the musicians could once again be the center of attention instead of me. I waved to everyone goodbye and left. They all watched me leave with smiles on their faces. I too smiled, thinking what a surprising conclusion to this interesting day.